Hi everyone, this is Dr. Praveen S. Patli here. Today, I would like to talk on the investigations for Helicobacterium pylori. What is the H. pylori? It is a gram negative micro aerobic bacteria. I repeat, it is a gram negative bacteria and aerobic bacteria. So, it is transmitted by oral to oral and fecal oral route. This Helicobacterium pylori produces an inflammatory response in the body. What are the impacts of H. pylori? It can cause a gastritis, atropic gastritis, ulcers in the stomach, adenocarcinoma, that is cancer, mucosa associated lymphoid tissue disease, lymphomas, Class 1 carcinogen. This is identified as a class 1 carcinogen. The meaning of class 1 is, is a definite way. There is enough evidence to say that H. pylori is a carcinogen. The cancers except the cardiac part of the stomach. So, whatever, wherever it is appearing except the cardiac part. So, those cancers are maybe associated with the influence of H. pylori. The symptoms of H. pylori infections are Abnormal pain with the burning and gnawing sensation. Poor appetite will be there. Weight loss, heartburn, indigestion, belching, nausea, vomiting, blood in the stool. That is a blackish discoloration of the stool. This is not a fresh blood because if it is a H. pylori infection, so usually the bleeding will be from the upper GI. Coming to the prevalence. So, India is said to be having 80 to 90 percent of H. pylori infection in the population. So, this is a huge infection, but it will not cause the symptoms for all the infected people. So, the people who are suffering from the H. pylori, they need to have the treatment, they need to take the treatment. Then, coming to the main part of our presentation, that is uh, the investigations for, to identify the presence of H. pylori, that is the Helicobacterium pylori. These investigations are classified as the invasive method of identifying the H. pylori and non invasive method of identifying the H. pylori. In the invasive, so we have to insert the endoscope, upper J endoscope, and take the bit of tissue from the stomach, that is the antrum or the greater on the, on the greater curvature of the stomach. And it can be sent for the histopathology to isolate the H. pylori or for the culturing the H. pylori or else we can go for the rapid urease test which is the most commonly used test that is the rapid urease test and culture and polymerase chain reaction. So these are the invasive methods. This comes from invasive because it needs a tissue to perform the investigation. PCR has an exception to say it's an invasive because sometimes in the PCR the saliva is also used. Coming to non invasive, urea breath test, stool antigen, and serology. So, these are the non invasive methods of identifying the H. pylori. We will look into the one by one advantages, disadvantages, sensitivity, and specificity of the investigations. Coming to the first investigation that is the rapid urease test which is as I told the most commonly used. The presence of H. pylori in the biopsy specimen convert the urea test reagent to ammonia. So whatever the specimen we have taken from the stomach that is placed on the kit. So he, there it convert if it has a H. pylori in the tissue then it convert the urea uh, into ammonia. So, this leads into an increase in the pH, then it causes an increase in the pH of the media and the color changes in the pH monitor. So, this is an indirect method of identifying the H presence of the H pylori. So, this rapid urease test is uh, done in by using the three methods that is gel based test, paper based test and the liquid based test. Gel based test it may take around 40, 24 hours and uh, paper based test it will take around 1 hour and the liquid based test it is the most commonly used nowadays this will take nearly about 5 minutes to perform the investigation. Regarding the urease test earlier 
then recommended time may lead to a false negative result. So you have to read at the given time only. The density of the bacteria present in the biopsy specimen also affect the reaction time and the diagnostic accuracy of the rapid urea test. While the minimum <coughs> sorry, 10,000 organisms are usually required for the positive RUT result. So this is not merely a simple infection. Those they, they, they need to have a proper loading of the organisms in the tissue, then only the RUT comes positive. Factors influencing the RUT is the S2 receptors antagonist like ranitidine and all and proton pump inhibitors like prentaprazole, reveprazole, esmoprazole, okay, bismuth compounds, antibiotics, achlorohydria and presence of blood. So this is the main disadvantage of performing this investigation whenever there is a bleeding inside the stomach and all. So we say this is RUT power to identify the H valory. So this is not a uh, RUT is not the proper investigation to perform. All of which increase the possibility of the false negative results. Specificity uh, above 95 to 100 percentage and sensitivity above 85 to 95 percentage. It has good sensitivity and specificity. And Antrum is a preferred biopsy site. Corpus biopsy from the greater curvature is suggested for the patients with the antral atrophy. And uh, at least uh, two weeks uh, PPI before taking the biopsy, he should not take a PPI for at least two weeks before or four weeks for the antibiotics. So at least a half month he would have not taken the PPI and uh, four weeks that is one month uh, he should be free from the having the antibiotics so this rule that is taking not taking a ppa for two weeks and uh, for antibiotics four weeks this holds good for most of the investigation to identify the presence of the h pylori coming to the next investigation that is the culture culturing of h pylori from the gastric biopsy specimen is highly specific but less sensitive method at least Two biopsy specimens, that is antrus, antrum and the corpus were recommended. This is time consuming and expensive also and antibiotic sensitivity of the H. pylori provided by the culture is particularly advantage in the clinical present, uh, practice. So sometimes if the patient is suffering from or not responding for the given treatment for the H. pylori, then this is the best method to go for, for the H. pylori because is not only give the idea about the presence of the H. pylori, but simultaneously what it does, it tell us culture and sensitivity. So you can check the sensitivity of the organism if it is got cultured. So whether the person is sensitive for the given antibiotics or, or not. If the patient is not responding in the initial treatment, if you are taking the patient for the next uh, time uh, invasive test, then this is the ideal method to go for. Polymerase chain reaction that is a PCR or RT-PCR real-time polymerase chain reaction. So the gastric biopsy specimen or the saliva or the stool or the gastric juice and the uh, uh, variable specimens can be taken and uh, these are sent for the polymerase chain reaction. This provides excellent sensitivity and specificity greater than 95% and can be used in the patients with the bleeding also. This is the main advantage of the PCR. Even the patient is bleeding, so the test will not, the test will not get influenced by the bleeding. Urea A, GLM, M, Urea C, 16S, R, RNA, 23S, R, RNA, HS, P60 and VACA genes had been used to detection of the H. pylori. So any one of the gene is used for, for the increase the number of these uh, genes and uh, DNA channel is used for the polymerase chain reaction and these will get multiplied and those can be tested easily. Fewer bacteria required in the sample. So as I told for the RUT, 10,000 bacteria is required in the given sample. So here there is not there is not the main criteria. Even the lesser, a small degree of infection also can be traced out by the PCR method. Urea breath test. Here what we do, this test is used for almost from last 30 years. 
एंड हियर व्हाट वी डू ए थर्टीन सी और फोर्टीन सी लेबल्ड यूरिया इज गिवन टू द पेशेंट टू इंजेस्ट विच इज हाइड्रोलाइज to a labeled CO2, then it releases the CO2. That uh, the CO2 which is released in the stomach, then that CO2 is get absorbed into the or enters into the circulation. So that is in the indirectly it get exhaled by the breathing, which is labeled CO2 can be measured by using a device. So what do we do? Just a brief. We give some uh, urea to ingest. If it is he has a H pylori in his uh, stomach, then it will get hydrolyzed and causes a uh, liberation of the CO2 there. If he has an infection of the H pylori, and if increased CO2 will enter into circulation and then into the respiration, so that uh, exhalation is measured for the presence of labeled CO2. It even it has a high sensitivity, like ninety five percent sensitivity and specificity under the standardized procedures. Patients should stop taking PPI two weeks and antibiotic four weeks before the exam to avoid the false negative results. Bleeding also influences the diagnostic accuracy in the uh, UBT, that is urea breath test. Accuracy of UBT in the pediatric patient is not that good. It's not that good as that of the adult, especially below the age of six years. Stool antigen test, that is, SAT test, sensitivity and specificity is ninety four and ninety seven percent respectively. This method detects the presence of H pylori antigen in the stool sample. So this is non-invasive method. We have completed the invasive method. Now we are jumping into the non-invasive methods. So the stool is the sample here. So even this has a high sensitivity and specificity. There are once again two methods in it: enzyme immunoassay and immunochromatography assay. Among this, EI. A is more reliable investigation. That is, enzyme immunoassay is more reliable. Coming to the antibody-based test, numerous serological tests based on the detection of the anti-H pylori IgG antibody are widely available. So, in the previous investigation, we have gone for the antigen. Here. the if the body start fighting we develop some antibody in the body so those antibodies are tried to identify if there is a presence of antibody for the h pylori then it is a indirect way of identifying the presence of h pylori infection serological test have also frequently been used in the screening this is the especially if not for the diagnosis this is for the screening The sensitivity and specificity is ninety one and ninety seven percent respectively. Coming to the conclusion, so none can be considered as a single gold standard in the clinical practice. Several techniques have been developed to give the more reliable results. Serology was not influenced by the upper gastrointestinal bleeding. So, so what I would like to conclude here is invasive method is the best method because. in to identify only h pylori so of course we can go for the uh, non invasive method but simultaneously if you want to see the lesions so what are the depth uh, means uh, how badly the mucosa is get affected so all this for all those things you need to have undergo for the uh, upper gi endoscopy and simultaneously you can go for the uh, biopsy also for the uh, for as to identify the presence of h pylori So, if you, this is, this is all about the investigations used for the H pylori uh, infection, if you like this video, then kindly subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Thank you, thank you, one and all for watching my video.